Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in Chemical Equilibria. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with this question that we were doing, where we're going to be looking at chemical equilibria and reaction rate questions. And then what we're going to do is, if we get through in all of the exam paper questions that I want to get through, then we'll start on acids and bases. Let's see how that goes. Um, the reason I'm doing so many equilibrium, chemical equilibrium questions is for the simple reason that it actually is a large part of your paper two exam and um, I find a lot of students struggle so the best thing to do is to do lots of examples. Okay so we got as far as doing our calculation where we said that we wanted to work out our Kc. Okay, it says, no, we calculated the initial moles of X2 and Y2 that are placed in the container. Um, we've already worked out the number of moles of Y2 was one. Now we are looking for the number of X2 and we're going to use our Kc formula. And they've told us that this is at 800 degrees Celsius and at 800 degrees Celsius the Kc was 4. So we're going to say okay fine Kc equals the concentration of remember the products and look they're all gases that makes life very easy. So it's x y 3 squared all over the concentration of x2 multiplied by the concentration of y2 or cubed. So we're going to basically substitute these values in and then solve for x. So this value here is 4. x, y, 3 base squared is 0 0.2. So that's going to be 0 0.2 all squared. All over x2, which we don't, oh, we do. It is x minus 0, 2 all over 2. And y2 cubed is 0. 0.2 cubed. So do you agree that these squares can be cancelled with one of these and we just left with 0 0.2? So if we rewrite this, and what I'm actually going to do is go into the original and delete. No, no. There we go. Delete. There we go. Now that we've got it. And go back to yeah. There we go. Now that we've got this, we can actually rewrite it. So we're going to go 4 equals 1 over x minus 0, 0,2 all over 2 multiplied by 0, 0.2. So I can take that across and I can get 4 times 0, 0.2 equals 1 over x minus 0, 0,2 over 2. So that's 0, 0,8 equals, and what we do is when you divide it, you tip in time, so it becomes 2 over x minus 0.2. So I can multiply that across and I get 0, 0,8 multiplied by x minus 0, 0,2 is equal to 2. So I can divide both of those by 0, 0,8 and I get x minus 0, 0,2 is equal to, and let's use a calculator. So we're going to get 2 divided by 0, 0.8 is going to be 2.5. Therefore, x is going to be 2.5 plus 0 0.2, which is going to be 2,7. So the correct answer for x for this is 2,7 and y2 was 1. Okay, so now we know what the initial number moles of x2 is. Next, they've asked us, and I'm going to delete all this writing because we don't need it. Uh, so let's erase all ink. Okay, fine. Now it says, is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic? If you look at this, you can see the Kc increases as the temperature goes up. Okay, but remember the Kc is always the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants, right? So if the Kc is increasing as the temperature goes up, that means that the number of products is increasing as the temperature goes up. So therefore, I would say that delta H is greater than naught, and I would say that the forward reaction is endothermic. And I've just explained my answer. Now it says, what effect will adding more Y2 at 800 degrees Celsius have, the f have on the following? So let's think about this. We've got x2 plus 3y2 
is in dynamic equilibrium with 2, X, Y, 3, and they're all gases. And they want to add more Y2. And they want to know how will this affect the rate of the reverse reaction? Okay, well, increasing the amount of Y2 is going to favor the forward reaction. It's going to favor the forward reaction and therefore it is going to decrease the rate of the reverse reaction, reverse reaction. Okay, the concentration of X2, well, if we add more Y2, if we increase the concentration of Y2, what is going to happen? We're going to favor the forward reaction, and therefore we're going to use up some of our X2. So the concentration of the X2 is going to decrease as we use some of it up to make more to XY3. Finally, it says which one of the following gases, XY3 or X2, would be present in a higher concentration equilibrium mixture at 400 degrees Celsius? Okay, so your KC in this case is 0,8 at 400 degrees Celsius, which is again the cons equal to the concentration of 2XY3 over X2 multiplied by 3Y, sorry, Y, and that's a 2 squared, and that's y3, oh, y2 cubed. Okay, but do you agree it's products of reactants? Okay, and if Kc is smaller than 1, it means that we've got more reactants. So the question is, which one of the following is xy cubed, xy3, or x2 would be present in higher concentration? The answer is x2, and the reason is Kc is smaller than one, therefore there are more reactants than products. Or you could say that the equilibrium lies very much to the left, and therefore we've got a lot more of X2 and 3 and Y2. Right. Okay, let's start with this question. So this is a nice graph question. Okay, and it says. In a research laboratory, a mixture of SO2 and O2 are gas. Um, SO2 and O2 gas are placed into a closed container with a small amount of V2O5. Okay, so we've got SO2 plus O2 form a dynamic equilibrium and they form SO3. Okay, so we need to balance that. So, hang on a minute, I'll work it out in a second. It says, at certain times, various changes. Okay, right. So, let's have a look at this. So, obviously, this is a reaction rate. So, this is going to be our um, forward reaction. And this is going to be our reverse reaction. Okay. So, let's just quickly, it says, write down the balance equation for the represented. Balance. Okay. So, we've got SO2 plus O2 gives you SO3. So, we need to balance this. And the easiest way to balance this is to put a 2 in front of here. Will that work? That gives us two and two is four and two. Okay, no, that's not going to work. I'll tell you what's going to work is this. If I put a two in front of yeah, if I put a two in front of yeah, I'm going to have two sulfurs and I'm going to have four plus two is six oxygens. And if I put a two in from SO2, three, I've got two sulfurs and six oxygens. That works. So, and it says gas, gas, gas. So we're going to go. 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas is in dynamic equilibrium with 2SO3 gas. Okay, so that's my reaction. Before I even start the questions, that's my reaction. Now the question says, what is meant by the term dynamic equilibrium? Dynamic equilibrium is the position which is reached when the rate of the forward reaction, the forward reaction rate, is equal to the reverse reaction rate. Okay, the reverse reaction rate. The rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, now it says write down a balanced chemical equation of the reaction represented by the dotted line. So the dotted line is the forward process. So that is going to be 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas forward. So we just need a forward arrow 
two SO3 gas. Okay, now please understand, and then you have to write V2O5 on top of it, okay? Now it says, because that is your catalyst, and says, in the mixture of SO2 gas and oxygen gas are placed in the closed container. That's how we know that this is the forward reaction, because this is what it starts with. It starts with the SO2 and oxygen, and it forms SO3. Okay, now the solid line is going to be the reverse reaction. How do we know that? Because we're going to start with zero, okay, stuff. So that means that that has to be 2SO3 gas breaks down to form 2SO2 plus gas plus O2 gas. Okay, now it says at T equals 20 seconds, which is, yeah, okay. There was a change in pressure. State whether this change was an increase or decrease in pressure. Okay, so it, there was a change in pressure, and it says we need to state if it was an increase or decrease in pressure. Now, remember, this is reaction rate. You always look at your y-axis. And before I even look at this, I can see that the reaction rate has gone up, which means it has to be an increase in pressure. I don't even have to look at which reaction was favored, I can just see that, oh, look, the reaction rate has overall ended up higher than before, and increase in pressure increases the reaction rate, so therefore it has to be an increase. But considering that we're also looking at chemical equilibria, let's have a look. How many moles on the left-hand side? Do you agree that Do you agree that the forward reaction has been favored? It has got a huge spike with the forward reaction, so the forward reaction is favored. And if you look over here, do you agree we've got 2 plus 1? is three moles on this side. So we've got three moles on this side and we've got two moles on this side. So do you agree that the forward reaction would be favored with an increase in pressure because there are fewer moles on the product side? So again, it's an increase. Then it says, what other change in reaction occurred at t equals 40 seconds? So now, do you agree it's a square? It's a square. Okay, so what could possibly have happened? Do you agree there's a decrease in the reaction? It is a very serious decrease in the reaction rate. Okay, and remember this is a reaction rate. So, it can't be temperature. Okay, let's think about what changes reaction rates. Okay, it could, my options are temperature. We know it's not pressure because we've already messed with pressure. Okay, but let's go pressure concentration, um, surface area, which uh, can't do this is gas, and nature of reactants can't be, and the last one is catalyst. Okay, so the only one that is going to affect the reaction rate overall, both the same way, has to be a catalyst. Okay, it can be a reverse catalyst, but it has to be something like that. It is not temperature, because temperature is going to spike either the forward or reverse reaction, and an increase in temperature will obviously increase the endothermic reaction, decrease, okay, right, but it's not going to be temperature because it has to spike one way, okay? It can't be pressure, we've already spoken about that. The same with concentration. If it's a change in concentration, it means that we've removed something, which means that there has to be a spike with one of them. The only thing that we can have that has got a joint equal effect on both the forward and reverse reaction is going to be a catalyst. And since the reaction rate has decreased, it is a reverse catalyst. Okay, it's a reverse catalyst. So the only thing I can say here is that this is a catalyst. Okay, now let's have a look at this question. So this is a second question that is on the same exam paper, okay? It says that's why it's included on the same page. It says 0.5 moles of hydrogen gas and 0.5 moles of oxygen gas are sealed in a 200 cubic centimeter container at a temperature of 118 degrees Celsius. The following chemical equilibrium was established at certain temperature. And do you see that delta H is negative? So we know that this is a forward reaction is exothermic. Okay. It says analysis of the equilibrium mixture shows the mass of oxygen in the container was 9.6 grams. Calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction as temperature. Okay. So we need a table. We need a rice table. R, I, C, E and then E, okay?
Then we need hi two hydrogens plus an oxygen goes to, and I always like a bit of double line, and it's two water vapors. I say water vapor or steam because it's a gas. Okay. It tells you that 0 0.5 moles was placed in this and 0 0.5 moles of the oxygen. That's what we're given. They tell you it's a 200 cubic centimeter and what is wrong with that grade 12s? What's wrong with that is that should be 200, it should be in decimeters cubed. So we have to divide that by thousands. That becomes 0 0,2 decimeters cubed, right? So that means we're going to divide this by 0 0,2, we're going to divide this by 0 0,2, and we're going to divide this by 0 0,2 to get our concentration. They also tell us that analysis of the equilibrium mixture, so the mass of oxygen in the container, is 9.6 grams. Okay. So we know, or you should know, that the molar mass of oxygen is 16, but we have a diatomic molecule, so this means that the molar mass of our oxygen is 32, right? They also tell us that the mass that we have is 9.6, so we can find the number of moles, because we can say number of moles is mass over the molar mass. So the mass that we're given is 9.6, over the molar mass of 32. So then we've got 9.6 divided by 32 equals 3 over 10, which is 0 0.3. So at equilibrium, we have got 0 0.3 moles of oxygen left over in the container. Okay, so now we can use that information to work out the rest of the table and then get our KC. Okay, so do you agree that since they don't say anything about the water vapor, we can assume there was zero to start with? Okay, this is our change. And remember, our change is always using the ratios in the rice, okay, in the reaction. So first of all, do you agree that we started off with 0 0.5 moles of oxygen and we've got 0 0.3 moles at the end, which means we must have used 0 0.2 moles. Okay, now we need to look at the ratios. The ratio of oxygen to hydrogen, it's 2 to 1, or hydrogen to oxygen is 2 to 1, which means we use twice as much hydrogen as we do oxygen, which means we need to double that up. So it becomes minus 0, 0,4, which becomes 0, 0,1, which means that's 0, 0,1, and this is 0, 0,3, by the way. Again, we're looking at a ratio either of 1 to 2 or 2 to 2. It doesn't matter which one you use. So let's, look at the, let's do these two. Let's do these two. So we're going to look at a ratio of 1 to 2. That means that if I've used up one mole, I'm going to make two moles. So I'm doubling up again. But this time, instead of using, I'm making. So instead of using up 0 0.2, I'm making 0 0,4, which leaves me with 0 0,4 here, which gives me 0 0,4 there. Okay, and now we need to work out these values. So we need a little calculator and we're going to go 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.2 and that's going to be a half, obviously. Um, and I hope you can therefore see the ratio that this is going to be a half, this is going to be 3 over 2 and this is just going to be 2 because the 0 points are obviously the same size. So now we can work out our KC. So our KC is, now first we check again, gas, gas, gas. Life is cool, we can include them all. It's always the products, so it's H2O squared over H2 squared O2. Then this is two, so it's two squared all over uh, 0 0.5 and that's squared, multiplied by the oxygen, which is 1, 5. Okay, so now we get 2 squared is 4 over 0 0.5 squared. So let's do a little bracket. 0 0.5, I don't know why I'm bracketing. Let's just do it anyway. Close bracket. 
open bracket 1.5 close bracket equals move it over equals 32 over 3 which is 10 comma 67 10 comma 67 so that is the KC and remember the KC doesn't have units because it's a ratio of just the concentrations. So it's going to be moles per decimeter cubed over moles per decimeter cubed and they cancel. So it's a ratio of how far this reaction has gone forward or backwards. And I know it doesn't ask it in the question yet, but what can we say does this KC tell us about the equilibrium? Because KC is quite a big number and it's quite far above one, we can say this equilibrium lies very far to the right, which means we that we're getting out a lot of product. Okay, so our yield is high. All those phrases. Okay, right. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, so we've got the catalytic oxidation of ammonia is represented by the equation. We've got ammonia plus oxygen gives you NO plus water and they're all gases. Life is good. It says two moles of ammonia gas and one mole of oxygen gas are placed in a two decimeter cube container at a thousand kilopascals and allowed to reach equilibrium at a thousand degrees Celsius. At this temperature and pressure, the amount of water vapor present is 0.6 moles. Calculate the value of the Kc. Okay, so we're going to do it. So again, we're going to use rice. R I C. E, e. And guys, if you are getting bored with these questions, I really hope that means that you are doing them ahead of me. You're actually working ahead of me and you are going through it super fast and you don't actually need for me to work out numbers for you. Um, if that's not the case and you're still struggling a little bit, then watch because the more you watch these, the more you go through them, the better you get at them. Okay. Also, again, I'd like to suggest to you guys that if you are struggling a little bit, feel free to watch, just watch what I'm doing now and then come back. You can watch a recording of it. The easy way to get a recording is just to come back the same way that you would watch it. And then what you need to do is you just need to pause at the beginning of the question and then try it for yourself. Okay, so what do they tell us? They tell us that two moles of ammonia gas and one mole of oxygen gas are placed in a two decimeter cube container. So divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. They can do that concentration. Okay, and allowed to reach a thousand. Okay, at this temperature and pressure, the amount of water vapor present is 0.6. So that's 0, 0,6. Okay, so that's the information we get given. Now let's work out what we know. Initially, we had zero of this, which means we made 0, 0,6 of that. We made 0, 0,6. Okay. Now, the reason I like this question is because these ratios aren't nice. There's no 1 to 2, 2 to 3, I mean 1 to 3 or anything else. It is um, 4, 5, 4, and 6. So you need to think a little bit about how you're going to get this. Okay. So let's look at the ratio of these two. So it's 4 to 6. So do you agree that ratio is the same as two to three? I can just divide by um, two for both of those. So the ratio is two to three, okay? What that means is that this is 0 0.6 to something, okay? But this is three parts and that's two parts of it. So do you agree if I take this 0 0.6 and I divide it by three, I'll get how much one part is, okay? So one part is equal to 0 0.2 moles. But how many parts do we have here? We've got two parts. So we're going to go times by two, and that gives us 0 0,4. So this is 0 0,4. So this is 0 0,4 which makes sense, does it not? Because if this is 6 and 4 and this happens to be 0 0.6, and obviously this is going to be 0 0.4 because it's the same ratio. The reason I'm showing you how to do this very slowly is because sometimes it's not a beautiful little number like a 0 0.6 at 6. It might be 0 0.5 and then you have to work out the ratios, okay? Okay, so now let me just erase this so that space to right. Okay, 
So that means we made 0.6, so we up 0.6. This is 0.6, sorry, 4. This is 0.4. Right, now we used. Now again, the ratio is 5, 6. But because this is 0.6, this means we're going to use up 0.5. And again, this ratio is 4 to 4, which means if we made 0.4, we must have used 0.4. So 2 minus 0.4 is 1.6, and 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. So this is 1.6, and this is 0.5. But now, obviously, we have to now divide this all to get the actual values of our concentrations. So this is 1.6 divided by 2, which is 0.8. This is 0, 0,25, this is 0, 0,2, and this is 0, 0,3. Right, now they wanted us to work out our KC. So let's do it. KC equals, check again, gas, 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 gas. Awesome, they can all be in your KC expression, mass expression. So it's going to be NO to the power of 4 multiplied by H2O to the power of 6, because it's always products over reactants. This is going to be NH3 to the power of 4, all over O2 to the power of 5. Okay, so NO is O2, so I mean 0.2, so 0 0.2 to the power of 4. Water vapor is 0 0.3 to the power of 6. Ammonia is 0.8 to the power of 4, and oxygen is 0.25 all to the power of 5. And now we need our calculator. So let's get our calculator out. Okay, so fraction. Okay, so we've got 0.2 to the power of 4. Okay multiplied by 0 0.3 to the power of 6 all over 0 0.8 to the power of 4 multiplied by 0 0.25 to the power of 5 equals. Wow. <laughs> okay, right. So let's write that out. It becomes 0 0.003. Okay, so it equals 0, 0, 0, 0.003. Okay, now it says briefly explain the significance of the value obtained. Okay, so do you agree that this KC is really small? It is much smaller than 1. So therefore we can say that KC is very much smaller than 1 which means, and you can say either of these, you can either say therefore the reaction lies very much to the left, or you can say there is a very low yield of products, little to none, or you can say that there are much more reactants Than products. There you go. Either any of those would be correct. Okay, now it says what effect will the addition of a platinum catalyst have on the yield of NO at the given temperature? Write down only increase, decrease, or remain the same. Okay, so catalysts increase the rate of the reaction, but they don't shift the equilibrium. So therefore, we'll have no effect. It will remain the same. What effect will it have on the yield? The effect, the yield of no, you know, will be exactly the same because the platinum catalyst will get there faster, but it won't make any more. Okay, now it says, the pressure of the system is decreased by increasing the volume. Use the Chatelier's principle to explain how this change affects the yield of NO. Okay, grade 12. So remember what I said to you, it doesn't matter that they've said use the Chatelier's principle. Your answer will include the following. By the Chatelier's principle, 
comma. Now, let me explain something to you. You need to include that, okay? By including that, you don't necessarily get a mark, but if you don't include that, then there's a chance you will lose a mark because you haven't said by the Chatelier's principle, okay? So by the Chatelier's principle, an increase in pressure will favor the side with fewer moles, okay? And we look at this, we can see that the reactants have got nine sides, nine moles, and this has got 10 moles. Therefore, the reverse reaction will be favored. Therefore, um, the amount of, what are we looking at, NO? amount of NO will decrease. Okay, because what's going to happen is this reaction is going to go this way. It's going to favor the reverse reaction. Admittedly, it's a, quite a small change. I mean, it's from 10 to 9 moles. It's not a huge change. Okay, but it will favor the reverse reaction and therefore your NO concentration of NO will decrease and the yield of NO will decrease. Okay, now it is found that at a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius, the value of the equilibrium constant is greater than the value calculated. What is the sign of delta H the reaction mentioned? Okay, so they started at 1000 degrees Celsius and they've dropped the temperature. So they've decreased the temperature. And by decreasing the temperature, they favored the forward reaction because the KC has gone up. So if your Kc increases, it means you're favoring the forward reaction. So that means a decrease in temperatures favored the forward reaction, which means that if the forward reaction has to be exothermic, but that's not what they're asking. They're asking what is the sign of the delta H, and that is going to be negative. The sign of the delta H is going to be negative, and this is why. Explain your answer. By decreasing the temperature, please note that you can't write arrows. You need to write by decreasing the temperature, we are favoring the forward reaction because Kc has increased. Therefore, the forward reaction is exothermic. Exothermic. There you go. Okay. Okay, I think this is the last. No, we've got two more. Okay. Right, so we'll start acids and bases tomorrow. Okay, let's carry on. Solid potassium chromate, okay, is dissolved in water. So now it forms chromate ions. The chromate ions reach equilibrium with dichromate ions according to the following balance equation. Okay, so again, I've included this one for a couple of reasons. The one is because we've got a change in color and the two is because we're going to have the common ion effect. The common ion effect. So I wasn't just randomly choosing exam paper questions. I was actually trying to choose exam paper questions that um, would provide you with different types of questions with respect to chemical equilibria and reaction rates. Okay, so now they say concentrated nitric acid is now added to the equilibrium mixture. So let's read that again. We've got chromate plus hydrogen plus ions gives you dichromate plus water. Okay, and now they add concentrated nitric acid. But nitric acid is a very strong acid and dissociates completely into H plus plus NO3 minus ions. So what are we effectively doing? Do you agree that by adding concentrated nitric acid, we're actually increasing the concentration of your hydrogen plus ions, okay? Which means that if we're increasing the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions, we are favoring the forward reaction. So now it says, predict the color, change in color, if any, that will be observed as the nitric acid is added to the solution. Only write down orange to yellow or yellow to orange or no change. And obviously the answer is going to be yellow to orange. By adding the nitric acid, we increase in the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions because it's a strong acid. It dissociates completely. Okay, so it breaks into H plus and NO3 minus. The H pluses, that means we're increasing the concentration of the H pluses here. Well, in overall, but that means it shifts this, which means we increase concentration here, which shifts the equilibrium by the Chatelier's principle, 
forward to get rid of that and therefore we're going to change color from yellow to orange. Okay, it says which one of the two ions, chromate or dichromate, is more stable in a low pH? Okay, so if we have a low pH, it means that we have lots of acid. Okay, and if we have lots of acid, it means that we're going to favor the forward reaction. And therefore, your chromate, your dichromate is going to be more stable. You would have dichromate plus water. Okay, uh, I'm just going to change color. Right, so now it says, when the temperatures increase gradually, we're increasing the temperature, the observed color solution changes to yellow. So this reaction, the reverse reaction, likes an increase in temperature, which means the reverse reaction must be endothermic. Okay. Let's read a question. It says, is the forward reaction represented by exothermic or endothermic? Well, if the reverse reaction is endo, the forward reaction must be exothermic. Okay, now it says, explain your answer by referring to Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, by Le Chatelier's principle. An increase in temperature will favor the endothermic reaction. Okay, since the color changes to yellow, we can see the reverse reaction is favored, right? Therefore, the reverse reaction is endothermic, therefore forward reaction is exothermic. Sure. Okay, now please remember that when you write down the answers, you can't write an arrow T. Okay, you need to say by Le Chatelier's principle, an increase in temperature will favor the endothermic reaction, etc., etc. Okay, you can't just write out shorthand. Please don't do it. Okay, I've got two minutes. Okay, it says five moles of hydrogen gas and five moles of iodine vapor are sealed in a two decimeter cubed container at a temperature of 600 Kelvin. Okay, the reaction reaches equilibrium according to the following balanced reaction, H2 plus I2 gives you K2. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen iodide at equilibrium if the equilibrium constant at 600 is K, is six, is at 600 K is 0.36. Okay, and then we've got a graph. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So we're going to do rice again. And I'm going to start you off, and then I know that we're running out of time. So what I'd like to suggest you do is try it for yourselves, and then you can come back to our lesson tomorrow and see how you did, and we'll finish off this question and then move on to acids and bases. So we've got H2, we've got I2, and then we've got the product 2HI. <clears throat> they tell us we've got five moles of hydrogen and five moles of iodine gas are sealed in a two decimeter cubed container. Um, the reaction reaches equilibrium. Da, 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 da. Calculate the concentration of the hydrogen iodide. They want the concentration of hydrogen. Let this be X. <clears throat> okay, right. At equilibrium, if the equilibrium constant Kc is 0.36. Okay, so they want this to be X, okay? So, what else do they tell us? Okay, fine, so that's X. Five miles of hydrogen gas and five miles of iodine vapor sealed in a two decimeter container. Action reaches equilibrium according to the following. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen iodide equilibrium if the Kc is 0.6. 
Okay, so we know that Kc equals the concentration of your products, which is Hi squared over hydrogen to iodine 2. Okay, and I'm going to love and leave you at this point. And I'm going to let you think about what you want to let be x. I know that we're trying to work out the concentration, but think about it a little bit. And then I will come back to you tomorrow and we will go through this question because it's not time, I'm sorry. We'll go through this question. And then once we've gone through it, we will move on to acids and bases. Yay. Right, grade 12s, have an awesome evening. Cheers.